welcome. Welcome to St. Anne's today. We celebrate the 12th Sunday in ordinary time. In the Western world today, Christians often do not face the sort of persecutions encountered by the disciples of Jesus' time. For us, a courageous faith is still needed, but occurs in much more subtle ways. Maybe it is standing up for the truth, or treating people with love, even if their choices might make us uncomfortable. Where in life, where in your life, do you need to increase your courage? Our mass intention is for the holy souls of purgatory. Our celebrant is Father Lemartine, assisted by Deacon Nick. At this time, kindly check that your cell phone is silenced, and please stand and greet those around you as we begin our celebration. Join us in singing, Shout to the Norm. Good morning. Let us begin our celebration by signing ourselves with the sign of our salvation in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My sisters and brothers, we come here today to praise and to thank God for all the blessings that have been bestowed on us. Blessings that help us cope with the misfortunes, the wrongs, and the evil that we suffer. Let us glory in God's love and God's mercy. In today's second reading, St. Paul reminds us that all people sin and still the gracious gift of Jesus Christ overflows. For the time we have sinned this week, let us pause to ask for mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our help and salvation and guide. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you intercede for us before God the Father. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again to break the bonds of death. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
Grant, O Lord, that we always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those who set firm on the foundation of your love through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord.
from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world. Though sin is not accounted when there is no law, but death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who was the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs on your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. I am not afraid of tomorrow, for I have seen yesterday and I love today, said William Allen Wright. Being afraid of tomorrow is one of the challenges that we're facing on a daily basis. We are afraid that we won't have enough money to survive. We are afraid that our children won't have enough resources to live a decent life. 
We are afraid that our country will go downhill when changes are happening. We are afraid that the church will be in bad shape because we don't have a good, we don't like this leader or we don't like this teaching. We are afraid, we are afraid, we are afraid. So if I were to conduct a, a survey just among ourselves, I think that I would find a bucket list of uh, things that we are afraid of. So because we have a habit of being overly anxious on things that we have no control over, so we build up a habit of fear over things that are beyond our control. So uh, indeed, when we are overly concerned, we become anxious, we make life difficult for ourselves, and uh, we make life difficult for those who are, who are around us because we create unnecessary stress and unnecessary anxiety for ourselves. So I'm wondering how many of us here can claim this line from uh, William Allen Wright as our own. So talking about uh, you know, fear and worry, uh, last year, uh, the day after Easter, I flew to Mexico for uh, one of my second cousin's weddings. So in this day and age, you know, young people, they do destination weddings. That's the new thing now. So, um, you know, the entire family, we were, we were all there. And I have uh, one family member. She worries about everything. She is so fearful. But uh, the husband is the opposite. He's fearless and uh, he likes to enjoy life. You know, he likes having a good time. So all of us, we were in the swimming pool, you know, some of us, you know, uh, were drinking, and I'm not telling you what I was drinking. <laughs> so uh, we were having a good time. And then uh, she asked the husband, I called the husband Joe, but it's not his name. He said, Joe, what time it is? Joe said, who cares? <laughs> Trust me, I tell you the better version of what Joe said. <laughs> because Joe used some colorful language to ask her, who cares? Because she wanted to know what time it is to start worrying about the next thing. So in my opinion, this person, she's not living because she is constantly living in fear. She is constantly afraid that uh, you know, bad thing would happen. So things that she has no control over. So today in the gospel, Jesus tells us that fear no one. And I go further to say that do not let fear overpower you. This is an encompassing advice from Jesus, which surely include our fear, if we can speak or write for Jesus. So if we let fear, you know, taking over our hearts, it would be surely paralyze us. So however, why fear if we have faith? Why fear if we believe in Jesus? Why fear if Jesus himself urges us to tell people everything you know about him? Do not fear. That's what Jesus said to the gospel. Don't fear of those who cannot kill us, but we have to fear of those of the one who can kill the body and the soul, which is God himself. So the message of today's gospel is to, you know, uh, be fearless in preaching the message of the gospel. Sometimes, you know, we are overly sensitive and we are hiding the truth, and we are hiding, we are afraid because we are overly sensitive, we are afraid of telling the truth. And Jesus in today's gospel is urging us to do that. So the apostles, they didn't let fear defeat them, for they knew that even if 
Jesus wasn't physically with them, but the presence of Christ was with them. And the same presence of Christ in the Eucharist is with us. Therefore, we shouldn't be afraid. So the same manifestation of Jesus' true presence is with us today to strengthen us when fear seems to take over our spiritual being and our psychological being. So having trust in him, that's all we need when sometimes we don't understand why life has been so disappointing to us. Jesus is telling us to trust him. So the reason why we are afraid of so many things is because we are lacking of trust and we are lacking of faith. Sometimes we are lacking of trust in ourselves, we are lacking of trust in the church, in the government, and you name it. That's why we are afraid. And today Jesus is telling us to, you know, walk out of our fear to let him known to those who do not know him. So uh, I was listening to a music from a French singer uh, Alain Morisot, I'll, to, I'll do my best to, to give you uh, the appropriate translation. So he said that when life is bouncing you back and forth, do not be afraid to sing even if you cannot carry a tune. Do not be afraid to dance even though you cannot dance. Take many steps until you find a rhythm because each has his own, own star and his own destiny. Every day that we live is a gift from heaven. Yesterday won't come back. What tomorrow will be, we don't know. It is today the sun is shining. The heart knows how to find a way, but fear too often holds us back. So this author is inviting us to live in the present moment. Do not be fearful about what tomorrow will bring because we don't know. And we don't even know if we will see tomorrow. And Jesus in today's gospel is calling us to be fearless. You who feel that you are inadequate, Jesus will make you adequate. You who feel that you are half empty, Jesus will fill you until you overflow. You who feel that you are fearful, Jesus will give you strength and courage. What he only wants from you is to learn how to trust him, how to rely on him, how to make him the center of your life, and he will equip you with everything you need. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and visible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, one of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, man, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he is crucified of the Pontius Pilate. He suffered in death and was buried, and rose again from the grave. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I believe in one who is the Holy Spirit of God, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord of the Father, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
trusting that God listened to our prayers, let us offer our prayers and petition with confidence. Our responses, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may have the courage to speak the truth in the light, to proclaim our faith from the very housetops. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all elected leaders, God will give them insight into the effects of their decisions and help them to make choices that will bring about the greatest good for society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are experiencing persecution for their faith, that they may give faithful witness to Jesus and that God will strengthen and preserve them through all suffering and every loss. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That there may be an increase in vocations to the religious life and the priesthood. May God send compassionate men and women to selflessly serve the needs of all. Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all of us here, that we may grow in holiness, be given a spirit of renewal and growth in faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the dying, and for those who suffer addiction, may they receive the healing they need and for those parishioners who have asked us for our prayers. Diane Ashby, Nanette Azado, Doug Burns, Rosalind Coffey, Elizabeth Coppage, Rosalie Granado, Vicki Hoffman, Elaine Johnson, Arlene Moore, Mary Morissette, Trisha Sharp, Joan Tweet, Bruce Weber, Iris Zekin. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May those who have died be received in the glorious light of Christ, especially for Annie Doss Powell, friend of Lorette Hall, Phil Rusuri, friend of Stephanie Holden, and Kenneth Wool Woolridge, brother of Loretta Hall. In our mass intention, the holy souls in purgatory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. As the La Salette Parish, let us ask for the Blessed Virgin's intercession. Our Lady of La Salette, reconciler of sinners. Heavenly God, even the tiniest hairs on our heads do not escape without your care. Teach us to care for our neighbor as you care for us and grant the needs of sinners and saints alike. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
friends that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to the Lord our God. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant we pray that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, cancel out our sins, by his rising from the dead, he has opened the eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. And make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose coming we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of La Salette, with blessed Joseph, the spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Anne, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Gregory John our Bishop and his auxiliary bishops, the other bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, the family of St. Anne in Merida, Georgia, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance in your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ, our Lord, through whom you bestowed on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. By the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity. 
in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. And let us share with one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
I like to ask the extraordinary Eucharistic ministers of the sick to come forward for the dismissal. My dear friends, the gracious gift of Jesus Christ overflows for many. Therefore, we give you his word and his body to revive the hearts and soul of our sick and suffering brothers and sisters. Go in peace and let them know that we are praying for them and the community entirely is with them. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask you of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with, const with constant devotion may be our true pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. Uh, there aren't any announcements, so of course I get to do them. But are there any visitors? Anybody visiting here at St. Anne's? We'd like to welcome you, find out where you're from. Where are you from, real loud? Michigan, Michigan. Michigan. welcome. <laughs> Anybody? Oh, yes. Where are you from, please? 
Here in Georgia, welcome. Yes, ma'am, as loud as you can, please. Chicago. Welcome. And right back, that sun's got me in the eyes. Yes, ma'am. Where are you from? India. 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 Well, oh, India. Thank you. Welcome. Let me come over here. Now I can. I say, well, it's not ladies standing right here. Where are you from? Yep. United Kingdom. United Kingdom. United Kingdom. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for being with us. Did I get everybody here? Anybody over here? I see the fingers pointing over here. Please stand. Let that, tell us where you're from. Oh, wow. St. Louis. St. Louis. Louis. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Did I miss anybody? Any more fingers pointing at anybody else out there closer to heaven? Well, thank you so much for celebrating Mass with us. It is our privilege that you're here. Uh, please feel comfortable here anytime you're around. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, who is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has ended. Let us go in peace and love to serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.